And let's go to the book of Romans together. Book of Romans chapter 12. Let's get into the word. Uh, the Bible says, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies. Come on, say my body. A living sacrifice. Say holy, acceptable to God, which is my reasonable service. Come on, say it again. Which is my reasonable service. Yeah, Father, we come before you this morning and we thank you. Lord, I'm standing in your grace. Without your grace, I could do nothing. We could be nothing without your grace. And we just stand in your presence, open up our ears to hear, eyes to see. Lord, let our minds be able to perceive and then conceive your truth, that we may give word, that we may give life to uh, your word that lies inside of us. Break down every brick, every wall, every stumbling block. God, every obstacle that comes in our way, by your grace, we're going to get on the other side and we're going to be everything you've called us to be in Jesus' name. And everybody said Amen. You may be seated in the presence of God this morning. Look at somebody, two people around you and say, it's time to be effective. Come on, one more time. Look at somebody else and say, it's time to be effective. The last two weeks, I've been preaching very, very hard. Um, so hard at the end of service. We've been having uh, brave heart services and we're uh, Charging hell with a water pistol and all kinds of stuff, kicking the devil's tail. But um, I'm a little tired today, <laughs> so um, we're gonna have some. We're just gonna let the Holy Spirit do what He wants. Amen. It's one thing to be a Christian. It's one thing to say I'm a Christian. It's another thing to be an effective Christian. It's one thing to say I believe in God. It's another thing to put those beliefs in action. Amen. This is church. This is where you get connected. This is what God has designed. When you come to church, it helps you to become what God has called you to be. I'm going to say this for the millionth time, and I'll keep saying it. You just can't go to any church that you want to. Now, you can and everything will be what it is because the word is the word of God. The truth of this is, is that God connects you with the right people to get you where you're headed in life. Everybody doesn't have access to your heart. Every pastor doesn't have access to your heart. I believe that God connects you and plants you into a place where you can grow. Amen. So you can go to any church and hear Bible. You can turn the TV on. And listen to my friend Joel Olstein. You can listen to different people and you can watch Joyce Meyer and all that. And they got great stuff. I do the same thing. But God calls you to a local body. And he calls you to a local body to be a part of that local body. To be a part of something that's bigger than your world. I'm just going to be matter of fact. Today is what I do when I'm sick. And then I guess I do it all the time. So, so you need to be in church. Church is very, very, very very important. The things I'm about to say, I don't want you to think that church is not important. We need church. You need a church family. You need to be in a place to where you're not tolerated, but be in a place where you're celebrated. You need to be in a place where you can grab somebody's hand and you can grab somebody's heart and you can get some faith from them when you don't have any faith. You can try to get some hope from them when you're low on hope. Amen. So you need to come and you need to invest your life. Yeah, you need to make yourself get up and come to church even when you don't feel like it. Amen. You need to come on Wednesday nights when you've been working all day and you're tired. Well, you can give yourself an hour. Amen. Because it's going to help you on the inside. We're going to read this. We're going to talk about this in a little bit. The Bible says, I pray that you prosper even as your soul prospers. If your soul isn't prospering, your life will not prosper. Your soul is your mind, your will, your emotions, your feelings. That's all part of your soul. If that stuff is not prospering, then you will not prosper. Your relationships will not prosper. Your money will not prosper. Your mind will not be prospering. And if you're not right on the inside, you won't be right on the outside. If you're weak on the inside, you'll be weak on the outside. Your external world is a direct reflection of your internal world. And so church is important and who you're connected with is important. And you've got to make yourself stay in the game even when you don't feel like staying in the game. Everybody okay? Everybody smile at me. There you go. It's the truth. It's how I live. It's what I do. It's what you do. It's who you are. Or you wouldn't be here this morning. 
Amen. Touch your neighbor and say, it's going to be okay. <laughs> My Lord, first time visitors are like, dang. I don't want to encourage anymore. But coming to church encourages you. Coming to church when you hear a message of God, it helps you focus. It helps you get back on track so you can start your week. Church is a great thing. I mean, know oh, that this is really in reality, this is just a warehouse. It used to be Swallens in the 80s. This is, this is just a warehouse, but I'm the church. Come on, point to yourself and say, I'm the church. Yeah, I'm the church. But when we come together, something great happens. Something great happens. We each have our own individual relationship with God. But when we connect with another believer, come on. It's a, when we connect with another, another believer, we have the same vision, one mind, one accord, and we're striving for unity. God can do something great. The Bible says that two are better than one. So it's important that you come and you be a part of something and you get involved and you serve and you help the vision of God come to pass. It's important. It helps you. Church is a great thing. Come on, say it's a great thing. Church is a great thing. It is a necessary thing. In fact, God said, do not forsake yourselves of coming to the house of God. If God didn't think church was important, he would have never said that. So church is important. There are no lone rangers in the body of Christ. Now, they're out there. They made the TV their church. They made Joyce Meyer their pastor. But Joyce Meyer ain't your pastor. She's an evangelist. And she's wonderful. I say the same things that she says, but she makes more money. Just playing with you. Not really. It's really what happened. But she's a great lady and does great things. But you need to be planted. Come on, say planted. And you need to be uh, planted into the house of God. And as church, as important as church is, and it's very, very important. I want, I want to say something to you this morning. As church is very, very important. Your victory and your ability to overcome in this life is not about what happens at this church or what doesn't happen at this church. Your victory is not in the concept of a church service. I want to talk to some mature people this morning. I'm going to talk to you very mature. Now, we all hurt and we all struggle. And we come to church because we need some more hope. And that's one reason why we're here. And you'll get that. So don't misunderstand me. You will get that. But you cannot base your life on how you overcome this world by what goes on in a church service. If you do that, it's elementary, it's shallow, and you will always struggle. Because this church and any church is filled with human beings. And anytime you get anything filled with human beings, you're going to get something filled with mistakes, weaknesses, and some heartache and some struggle. The person sitting next to you is not your savior. Your husband is not your savior. Your wife is not your fulfillment. Your friend cannot get you over all the time. Your relationship with Jesus Christ is the only thing that can get you over. It's the only thing that can get you over. And we love church and this is what we do. But baby, your victory is not whether we decide what this was a good church service or this was not a good church service. We ought to be able to have the same victory when we walk out that door. The same victory. I've had people tell me, well, I don't like your ministry time. I can't believe they don't have altar calls. We have altar calls. We, the last two weeks, we have people laying all over the place. People come in one time, and because it's not the service they're looking for, they decide to go somewhere else. We'll take your toys and go play another playground. We're going to do what God's called us to do right here. Because I ain't got time. I'll be honest with you. Addiction, the number one drug in Boone County is heroin. The next one is meth. After that is prescription pills. And there's people in this room and people, all good people who are addicted to pain medicine and don't know how to get out. I ain't got time for a bunch of whiny little Christians looking for their Kmart or their Target to be a consumer in the body of Christ. We got too many people who are hurting. And God is looking and I'm looking for a group of people who will stand up and say, we're going to stand up for the truth no matter hell or high water. And we're going to be everything that God. Do not. Do not. Place your victory on how good you think the church service went. The church is not your God. The church is not your Savior. The church is a tool that God uses to help you in your life. And that's it. It's a hammer. It's a nail. But it is not your foundation. Jesus Christ is your only foundation. And he will always be your only foundation. And when this church is over, when all this is dead and gone, Jesus Christ will still live forever and ever and ever and ever.
I'm going to kick pneumonia's butt. You watch me. Bring it on. I don't know what that was. As I run out of breath. Give me a minute. Does that make sense? Yeah. Church is good. You need it. We need to come together. But don't base your victory on what happens here. Because what if I'm off one day? What if the worship team isn't hitting it right? What are you going to do when they don't sing your favorite song? What are you going to do when Pastor Kelly doesn't shake your hand because he's got germs all over him? Look, y'all, I've been in church all my life. I know the deal. I've been under pastors. I've served on worship teams. I've served in children's ministry. I have ushered. I have armor bared. I've greeted people. I've run sound. I've, I've done everything I can. And I understand. I understand when you, you look, I've looked to pastors to try to fulfill a need in me. And to try, I almost look, I, I, it's like without them, I can't be. That's wrong thinking. God uses people. Do you know this is all temporary? You realize that? All this is temporary. My office in there. It's temporary. This is temporary. It's all going to pass away. So why you hold on to something that's temporary? It's all going to pass away. We need to hold on to something that's eternal. Amen. Celebrate where we're at, where God has you in the season. Be committed to it. Don't back up and don't quit. You be committed to it. But keep your focus right. Amen. I'm going to make you happy in just a little bit, I promise. Maybe, hopefully. Yeah? A lot of us put more emphasis on how well church service goes sometimes than we do our own prayer time. I think a lot of people get ticked off at church because it's not what they wanted. And in reality, it's because they're not doing it at home. And so they put all the pressure here. Okay, well, your relation, God doesn't clock in and clock out when we come in here and when we leave. His relationship with you is 24 hours. It's not in this church. This ain't, I've said this before, and just hear the concept, this ain't real. What's real is when you walk out that door and hell's knocking on your door. What's real is when depression's trying to take you down, when you're not in a church service, what are you going to do then? That's when your faith is real. What's real is when loneliness grips you and addiction grips you. Oh, God, and I slide down the steps. That was good, though. Did I do good there? That's good. My God, I think what's real is I need to stay right up here. I recovered well, by your grace, I don't know. <laughs> I want my mommy, I see. It's the type of thinking, and we don't actually say it, but subconsciously, we put our hope in one thing. It's that type of thinking so much that causes us to be ineffective. The Bible says, can we ver verse two, I forgot. And y'all, all of our visitors, I'm not on my game today, okay? So just give me some grace. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. That'll preach all day. That you may prove, come on, say prove. That you may prove what is that good and acceptable will of God. That you may prove what is that acceptable will of God. Can I tell you that we must be born of God to overcome the world? I'm going to say it again. The Bible says that we must be born of God to overcome the world. Not born in your denomination. Not born into your pastor. Not born into a church service. We must be born of God. Say of God. We must be born of God to overcome the world. Your life, as the Bible says right here, your life and my life should be proof that God's will is good, that his will is acceptable, and that his will is perfect. I'm going to say it again. My life and your life outside of these walls should be proof that God's will is good and that God's will is acceptable and that God's will is perfect. When people look at my life, when people look at your life, what are they seeing? Now, I'm not saying, I'm not trying. See, here's, here's the spirit of our society. Here's the attitude of our society. I'm going slow. Don't judge me. You're judging me. I ain't judging you. It's called responsibility. And I'm in that, baby, just as much as you are in that. When people look at my life, what if, if my book was open, what would they be reading? 
When people look at my life, they should tell and see that my life, that God's will in my life is good, that God's will in my life is acceptable, and that God's will in my life is perfect. Not that Kelly is perfect, and not that you're as perfect, but God is perfect. And the way that he shows perfectness is through my life. It's not me living at a standard so much to where I don't make mistakes. It's let people seeing the grace of God be an effect on my life. If God can do it in that young man, then God can do it in me. If God God can do it with that addict then God can do it in me if God can rescue her then maybe God can rescue me if God can rescue him then maybe God can rescue me I can't stay up here I don't know what the deal is let's get into this so there's some things that we must have to be an effective Christian come on say effectiveness come on say effectiveness Number one, one thing that we need to have in our life is a foundation. Say foundation. The foundation is the most important part. You cannot rush through a foundation. The foundation determines the rest of the building. Hear me. Your foundation of life determines the rest of your building. It determines the rest of the building. How do I know? What the foundation of my life is built on. Does that make sense to you? How many know that when they, they build a house? Jason, you're into this stuff, right? Yeah? How many know that the foundation is so important? If the foundation of a home is not right, it's going to mess up the whole building. How many have seen that? Cracks and foundations have to do things. If the, it's the same thing in our life. It's the same thing in your life. It's the same thing in my life. If my foundation is not correct, then the building of my life will not be correct. So you're going to have to take some time sometimes and begin to work on your foundation. I need to work on my foundation. It is the most important part. The most important part. How do I know when the foundation of my life is built on or what it is built on? What do I turn to when trouble shows up? Listen, how do I know what the foundation of my life is built on? What is the first thing that I do when trouble shows up? If the first thing that I do when trouble shows up, if I don't go to my Father in heaven with it, then that tells me what my foundation is starting on. It's either in a man, it's in a woman, or it's in myself. Come on, we're, there's no guilt here. <laughs> I'm not trying to make you feel bad. I'm trying to wake you up so you can discover the truth. That it's God's grace that empowers you. It's not you. It's God's grace. It's you receiving God's grace. That's all it is. Everybody all right? Yeah. Paul told Timothy that the foundation of God is sure. How do you build a good foundation? Well, number one, it takes time. And number two, it takes your energy. It takes your time. It takes your energy. It takes your time. And it takes your energy. It takes your time. And it takes your energy. You go to work. Those of you that are working, you go to work and you clock in and you clock out because you're getting paid for it. You go to college sometimes. After you paid all this money to go there and you're committed to your homework, you're committed to this. I'm going to challenge you. Be committed to your spirit life. Be committed to what's on the inside. Invest your life. Your payment not, might not be in gas money. And, and, and so, but I'm telling you, your payment is on the inside of you. You become strong. Your mind begins to shift and you begin to think differently. If we can think differently, then that tells me that I can be different. Ah, because the Bible says that I am transformed by the renewing of my mind. The Bible says how I am is how I, I think is how I am. Well, maybe I'm not thinking right. I wasn't raised this way. I don't care. It's not how you start, baby. It's how you finish. It's how you finish. And we choose to finish strong. And we choose, that's why Paul said, endure like a good soldier. Sometimes you're going to have to suck it up, buttercup, and just gird yourself up and just weather the storm and endure and put your trust in God and quit whining and quit backing up and put everything you got in the hope of God and you don't back up no matter what the cost. What are you willing to exchange for some peace? What are you willing to exchange to get fear out your mind? What are you willing to exchange to stop the voice of suicide? I told the antique mall I'd keep it down. We just need to buy this whole place. The 
The Bible says in 2 Timothy to study to show yourself approved. You've got to study. Can I tell you that God has built you? God has built you and he built you with the storm in mind. I'll say it again. God built you with the storm in mind. If he didn't think you could take some stuff, you wouldn't be going through some stuff. Mm -hmm. I said, if he didn't think you could take some stuff, he didn't cause the stuff. I said, he didn't cause the stuff. He mad at you. He didn't cause your trouble. But he's allowing some trouble to come against you. Because if you will trust in the one who can, re who, who, can, who can heal you, if you will trust in the one who is building you, he will take what the enemy has sent against you and make you stronger. What doesn't kill you makes you stronger. I got to sing sometime. They won't let me sing today. So number one, you got to have a good foundation. How are you building your life? Stay committed to building on your foundation. That's why this discipleship class, which is starting next week, is very, very important. I don't care if you've been in church for 50 years and you think you know the Bible back and forwards and you're nothing but King James. I don't care. I want you to invest your life and let God love you for who you are so you can keep becoming. This life is so temporary, y'all. It's just temporary. It is temporary. The other side of eternity, man. Eternity is forever. Even if you lived a little... I've asked God to cut me off at 80. That's what I've asked for. I don't know if he'll do it. That's what I've asked for. I'm already tired. I'm only 46. Yeah, I'm not promised tomorrow. If I said, God, let, let, let me be done at 80. I may change my mind at 79. <laughs> but I ain't 79 yet. But I'm telling you, but what, what, 80 years is not a long time. 100 years is not a long time compared to eternity. Y'all realize that? Don't get caught so, so much in your moment that you forget about eternity. We can get so caught up in ourselves and go so, so, up and so caught up in our situation. And all we see is pain and all we see is pain. Why is it that negative always steals our blessing? You can think of something that you are blessed about. You can think of something right away that you got heartache in and you got trouble in, but you can thank God for something. You know, you're here. Most of you, I believe, walked in in your own power. You're here. You're not in a wheelchair. I got an aunt who's basically comatose for the last two years of her life, sitting over, laying over there in a nursing home who has no, hardly anybody left, nothing. She can't move. She, if, if she wanted to, I, I, can I guarantee, I bet she wished she could be in a place like this. I bet she wished she could walk into Kroger's. I know we got trouble, but I'm telling you, you can count your blessings and find something to thank God about. And when you find something to thank God about, can I tell you what that does? It begins to release peace in your heart that everything's going to work out and everything's going to be okay. You can thank God. It might not be the roof that you want, but you got a roof over your head. Am I supposed to be getting loud? Number one, foundation number two. You ready? what I thought. You ready? Number two, you must be an active learner, an active participant in the future of your life. You must be an active learner, an active participant in the future of your life. You got to be responsible for you. I say this all the time. You're probably sick of it. I don't care. When God put Adam in the garden, he said, now reproduce and multiply. He didn't say, get on your knees and be in my spirit all your life. No, he said, no, you are in my presence. That's the thing. You're in my presence. God manifests his presence in so many ways. And just because you don't feel him like you don't like you want to feel him doesn't mean he's not there. He's on the inside of you. When you walk into Kroger's or you walk into Biggs or wherever you're going, you walk into O'Charlie's, you walk in knowing that the Son of God lives on the inside of you. When you walk into the bank and, 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 and everything is messed up, you walk in like you got the Son of God, which you do, the Son of God living on the inside of you. It's the same Jesus that's here. It's the same Jesus at Fifth Third Bank. Come on. You must decide to be an effective learner and an effective participant in the future of your life. If you don't know who you are, you will never know what you're capable of. I said, if you don't know who you are, you will never know what you're capable of. You know why I'm here this morning on borderline pneumonia? They even told me that my thyroid was all screwed up. I don't even, uh, from an accident. Well, I, here's the deal. I know who I am and I don't know in whom I trust. And I'm going to keep fighting, and I'm going to keep striving, and I'm going to keep moving until God's complete will is done in this boy. 
Amen. You've got to use some wisdom. I get that. That's why I'm canceling class tonight. If you don't know who you are, you will never know what you're capable of, and you will always believe what others say you are. I said you will always believe what others tell you that you are. Who did, who, who, who did your abusive parents tell you that you are? Who did your abusive uncle tell you that you are? I had an abusive uh, elementary school teacher. I was abused in second grade. I believed in what she told me all of my life until God began to heal me. And I still struggle sometimes. But I know who I am in Jesus Christ. I am not a loser. I am not stupid. I am not all these things that people say that I am. I am a son and a child of God. You are a son and a daughter and a child of God. Who cares what people said that you would never be who cares if they didn't believe in you if you got God on your side then that's all that matters because they ain't nobody gonna trump his card they ain't nobody gonna step on what he says when God speaks something it comes to pass <laughs> can't wait to take a nap yeah the authority to bind and loose in your life can I just be honest with you it's based on what you believe I said the authority to bind and loose is based on what you know. And it's based on what you believe. If you don't know who you are, you will always bow to what other people tell about you. You will always bow to depression. You will always bow to addiction. You will always bow to society. You will always bow to dreams that will never come true. you got to find out who you are and what God is saying about you. And that's how you live your life. And you don't quit and you don't stop and you stay in your lane. And baby, if you're in the wrong crowd and hanging with the wrong people, the Bible says if you want to be wise, then you're going to hang around some wise people. But if you're going to be in a company of fools, that's the way you're going to live your life. And there's relationships out there, and they will suck the hell out of you. They will suck you dry and get you down. A it's time to shift some things and become everything God has called. you got to be connected with people of covenant. Covenant relationship doesn't say, meet me here. And then the other relationship says, no, you meet me here. Covenant relationship says, well, I live in Florence. And, 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 and sometimes why? When you're in covenant, I need your help like right now. When you are in a covenant relationship, the covenant relationship says, I know you're in Florence. I know you live in Hebron, but let's meet in Burlington. If you're in a relationship that's one-sided all the time, you need to get out of it. Amen. The measure of authority in your life is what you have the capability. Listen, the measure of authority in your life is you having the capability to forbid and to bring things into your life. What are you able to forbid and what are you able to let in? That's your measure of authority. You're responsible. God's not your genie in a bottle. It's all about empowerment. And by the grace of God, you can do it. His mercy's new every morning. God's grace is for you, baby. Ain't, there ain't no way you can lose. if you. And the only way you lose is if you just quit. Where are you going to go? Gallenberg? Where you, I'm just going to quit. I'm just going to run away. Okay, where are you going to go? You think your trouble is going to stop because you changed states? I've changed states three or four times. It followed me. You might need to change some relationships and get some things in order because God's a God of order. You need to stop running. Whoever I'm talking to, you need to quit running. Ain't nothing for you to run to. It's not going to lead you anywhere. You're going to be in that treadmill of dysfunction. And if you don't get off, it's going to stay on six. It's going to go to seven. It's going to stay at ten. You're going to get tired. You're going to fall hard. Get off the treadmill of dysfunction. Get some solid stuff going on in your life. And let God love you. And let God make you become. First Corinthians tells us how to, tells us to take heed how we build. My question for you, I'm almost done. Not. My question for you is how are you building your life? The old Dr. Phil saying, how's that working for you? Can't do his accent right now. So number one, foundation. Number two, be an active learner. Number three, you got to have great faith. Come on, say great faith. you got to have great faith. Faith is a deep conviction. Hear me. Faith is a deep conviction. It is a deep conviction of an eternal, internal belief. 
not eternal, well, that too, but faith is a deep conviction of an internal belief that produces a corresponding action. I don't think I've ever given you that definition. Faith is a deep conviction. What do you get deep on the inside of you? What do you believe deeply that nobody can talk you out of? You know, when you say, I believe something and nobody can talk you out of that belief, it's because you believe it deep on the inside. And they ain't nobody can steal it from you. They ain't no devil. They ain't no addiction. They ain't no depression. Nothing can, you know, I may be walking through hell right now, but I ain't quitting. Why? Because there's something deep on the end. The Bible says deep calls unto deep. There's something about having that deep thing on the inside of you. You might be going through hell and you might be hurting, but nobody can steal what's in the deep and it's in the deep you know why it's in the deep it's because the devil can't dive that far can't dive that far can't dive that far it's gotta be great faith the limits of your life is based on how much you believe the limit of your life is based on your faith a life of faith is filled with two words I will I will I is a word of ownership. I is a word of responsibility. I will. I will. Two words. I will. I is a word of ownership. I take ownership. I take responsibility. Will is my right to choose, my ability to choose. It is a word of determination. Say determination. It's, a, it, 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 it's also responsibility. It's also ownership. But I will. I will. God loves me sure, purely out of his will. God loves me out of his will because he chooses to love me. Not based on what I can do for him or how good I am. God chooses to love me because that's who he is. God is love. So he chooses to love me. It is responsibility. God is being responsible and faithful to his own word that he loves his people and God loves the the world and God loves me. Look at your neighbor and say, smile. God loves you. Wow, y'all sound like a bunch of depressed people. Smile. God loves you. <laughs> Judy, I'm so full of joy right now. Yeah. <laughs> I is a word of ownership. Will is a word of determination. Faith is the ability to see something that does not exist in the physical. I said, faith is the ability. You ever want to have a superpower? I did. Always want to be Spider-Man. <laughs> Always want to be Superman. Without the tights. Never liked his uniform. Always want to be the one who saved the girl. Always want to be the one. Always want to have a superpower. Be cool to fly. I'm not on drugs or anything. I'm on antibiotics. That's about it. It's messed up my digestive system. But besides that, I'm okay. Yeah, I always wanted to fly and it'd be cool to fly. I always wanted to be invisible sometimes. Uh, we won't talk about that one. I always want to do like in Star Wars and when church people were talking bad about me, I just want to go. Pff, yeah. Just stifle their windpipe for just a minute. And Pastor Kelly, he did. <laughs> I don't know why they have to. Pff, yeah. This church is a thing. The sound of thing. Some people, I'm sure, want to do that to me, too. We need some help. In My superpower and your superpower is not you. It's God in you. It's Christ in you. You can have the ability to see in the spirit. Come on. What doesn't exist in the physical. That's faith. You have the ability to believe in something that you can't feel with your natural hands. You have the ability to step outside of, your, of our little human existence and step into something that is super natural. It's got super on my natural. I can't help but be natural. You can't help but be natural. But God is super. And when his super hits your natural, it becomes supernatural. It's not Ghost Hunters International. It's not spirit this and spirit that. It's the almighty God living on the inside of you you look like him the bible says that we are made in his image our bodies are a temple of the holy ghost we look like god wake up and realize who you are you have the supernatural power of god living on the inside you have got to learn to tap into it and just because you have it doesn't mean you have to get all weird 
we humans don't understand. Because we get freaked out when the presence of God hits us. And we can have your little freak out moments and God will bless you. I'm not judging. I was raised Pentecostal. Everybody's shouting all over the place. And I about wiped me out. I understand all that. I've seen some, some good, cool stuff. I've shaken under the power of God where I just, like I'm having an epileptic fit. So I'm not, I, I understand it. And God moves wonderfully. And I, I've shaken under his power. I've never felt anything like it. Then I've seen people walk into walls and fall off stages. That's just stupid. It's because we just get dumb. We get dumb in our human existence. Well, I can't control. Yes, you can. Shut up. The Bible says that the gifts are subject to the prophet. You can control the spirit of God on you. Don't act like you can't. Think God would give you something you can't control? Well, God's leading me. Yeah, God just flung you into a wall. <laughs> I was in Bible college once. <laughs> I have a really good friend, his name Dan. His name is, let me try that again. I have a really good friend I had named Dan. His name is Dan, and he's going to be here visiting in, in May, I think, uh, on a Wednesday night. Just a, one of my best friends in the world lives out west in Reno. <laughs> and uh, he uh, got saved, Wayne, and got filled with the Holy Spirit all at the same time. We're in Bible school, and we have prayer. We're like, rah, prayer. Like, rah. And I believe in rah, prayer. You know, we pray and, and all that stuff. And we had this, this teacher, uh, uh, his name was Lou. Great guy. Re really love God. Um, but you know, when when you saw Lou's arm going like this, you're like, oh boy. Lou's like, in the name of Jesus, hallowed something will be over. Blah, 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 blah. And he would focus in on you like, I need you either to run. God, give me shelter now. I, you're my refuge because Lou's arm is winding up. And, and Lou grabbed this other guy and... <laughs> Lou grabbed this other guy and they pointed Dan out and Dan was like, oh, my father, God, I love you, Jesus. Get and he saw Lou with his arm. He pointed him out and he's like, you are my friend. And somehow they headbutted each other. And Dan fell out. They thought Dan fell out because the spirit of God hit him. No, he fell out because you headbutted him in the forehead. Y'all know what I'm talking about. There's another story of a preacher. He had an old microphone in a camp meeting. And it just got done raining and there was puddles. He was preaching, stepped off the stage right into that puddle. People start shouting, oh, hallelujah. No, he just got shocked. When the power of God moves on you, it should be relatable to people who don't believe. You're still laughing. It's okay. I got in a moment there. Let me come back to that. When the power of God moves on you, it should be relatable to those who don't believe, and they should see something wonderful, not something that they would see in the Halloween store next door. Okay, I got to get out of here. I believe in the Holy Ghost power of God. I believe in praying in mighty tongues. I believe in stepping on the devil's neck. I believe in breaking the spirit of addiction. I believe in breaking the spirit of depression. In fact, they are my targets. I believe in all of that stuff. That's the things I believe in the power of God. I, I don't care what you all believe so much, but I believe when, when the people can actually fall out under the presence of God. I believe it. Now, some people fake it, but that's between them and God. So I'm not saying I don't believe. I'm just saying, you know, have some wisdom and have some balance. God ain't crazy. We might be, but he's not. I got to get out of here. I need some oxygen. Does that make sense to you? I don't know how I got on that tangent. It's not even in my notes. But it's time we become effective, not goofy. Can I tell you? I can get just as anointed when I talk like this. As I can when I'm screaming and jumping up and down. Because God's ability is not based on the level of inflection of my voice tone. I know who I am. I don't know where I am. <laughs> I might know who I am, but I have no clue where I am. Everybody okay? 
Yeah? Who was I talking about? I was trying to talk about faith. Where there is no vision, people perish. Can I tell you? Can you all just track with me? My ADD is all over pneumonia today. Can I tell you something? Vision for your life is life's adjustment. When you see what you can be, then you adjust your life to accommodate that. When you see what God is calling you to, then you adjust your life to accommodate that. If you don't, you will stay miserable. And you will go to everything else to fulfill that need. Vision is life's adjustment. When God gives you vision, you adjust your life. Amen. Amen. Foreknowledge of the will of God. Listen, foreknowledge of the will of God. Worship team, give me five minutes. Foreknowledge of the worship team. Foreknowledge of the will of God is manifested in the human soul as desire. Foreknowledge of the will of God is manifested in the human soul as desire. If you have a godly desire because God put it in your soul. If you have a desire to go kill people, it's probably not God. If you have a desire to go get high, it's probably not God. But if you have a desire to feed people, if you have a desire to worship, if you have a desire to read his word, if you have a desire to get your life back on track, then it is desire. it's God's will moving on the inside of you. And you need to adjust your life to accommodate that vision. Amen. You, we must move beyond a measure of faith. The Bible says that God has given every man a measure of faith. But we can't stay at measure. Hey, Kleenex. Where are they? Next one. ADD at its finest. We can't stay at a measure. We must move from measure to gift. Okay? Measure to gift. I have a measure of faith. Okay? My faith's got to grow. I got to have a gift of faith living on the inside of me. Yeah? I got to have it living on the inside of me. My faith cannot stay small. My faith must grow in order for me to make it and be sane. The Bible says to think on things that are of good and are a pure report. I got to have to have, I got to get some sanity going on inside of my mind. I can't, I can't stay out of measure. I got to move into the gift of faith. The last one, prosperity. Come on, say prosperity. Prosperity. Bible says in Psalms that God delights in the prosperity of his people. Prosperity basically means help along the way of the journey of your life. How many need some help in your journey? Let me know that your life is a journey, not a destination. Yeah, you're going to have some arrivals, but never destinations. I'm telling you, your life is a journey. Live in prosperity will help you. I'm not just talking money. Prosperity will help you on the journey of your life. Third John says that prosper in all things and be in health. I know I just read it. I'm trying. I had to preach. Be in health even as your soul prospers. Amen. The word prosperity that basically there means incremental increase, incremental increase. Prosperity is not the absence of lack. Listen to me. Prosperity is not in the absence of lack. Just because you might not have lack monetarily doesn't mean that you're prospering. Of course, we want more food in the fridge and we want to make the more gas in our tank and and we want to make sure our bills are paid. All those are natural good things. But prosperity is not always in the absence of lack. Yeah, you guys can come or I'm going to keep wheezing. Prosperity is not always in the absence of lack. Prosper and be in health even as your soul. Come on. They're good looking guys and gals, but look at me for a moment. Even as your soul, your mind, is your mind prospering? Is your thoughts prospering? Are you nice? Are you being kind? I want to go to a church where I feel good. No, I'm going to challenge you. This is my call. I told you before, I can't come up to people as a shepherd and say, nice sheepy sheepy. <laughs> Nice, sheepy, sheepy. I don't know how to do that. See, it didn't work very well. Would you want to follow a guy who always walked around to you? Hey, nice, sheepy, sheepy. I would. How are you thinking? Are you being kind? Are you being nice to the people that you say you love? <laughs> I'm, I'm looking at, the, I can't sing. I'm looking at the man in the mirror. I started doing Michael Jackson. I can't do it. Shimon. 
Are you being kind? Do you have the fruit of the Spirit living on the inside of you? Look, y'all, we can have wonderful services and we can cry and put our face in the altar and come up and snot all over the place and feel the presence in God and, and we can shake under the mighty power of God. But you know what? If you ain't being kind and nice and having the fruit of the Spirit, then that's all you got. The Bible says without love, all that stuff's just a clinging symbol. If you ain't got love working in your life, then you know what? Then don't speak in tongues in front of me. If you ain't got love working in your life, don't try to impress me by your Bible reading. I don't really care. What I'm impressed with is how the fruit of the Spirit is moving on the inside of you. Tongues is going to cease, but love never fails. Amen. Can I tell you, it's the love of God that's going to change our world. It's the love of God that's going to change our world. It's the love of God. I don't like going to... I'm sorry, I'm, I'm getting pitchy now. <laughs> because of my voice, I'm trying to sound like a man. I called Aaron call, I called Aaron the other day. He's like, man, you sound like a little boy and a little girl at the same time. <laughs> Missy, I don't know, where's Miss, Missy's? I called the salon the other day to cancel my hair appointment. And the girl who answered said, Missy, there's some, on, there's some lady on the phone for you. <laughs> Whatever. I don't know what I'm talking about. Yeah. These are the things that I have to ask my life. I'm just not preaching them. I have to ask myself this. I have to ask myself this. This is how I keep, you know what I'm, can I just, guys, look, I'm giving you me. I'm giving you what God is giving me. That's all I'm doing. All this stuff I preach, I do. And, and I try. And sometimes I suck at it. Sometimes I'm not good at it. My mom's not here, so I'm not going to apologize for saying suck. Sometimes I'm not good at it, but you know what? I'm not quitting. I'm not quitting. If I have any breath left in these lungs at all, and until the day that I leave this world, I will put my trust in him and I will not stop. My family will never walk out on me, but if they do, I ain't quitting. You may walk away from me. Go ahead. You're not the first. I ain't quitting. People who I put trust into have stabbed me in the back, talked bad about me. I ain't quitting. Spread a lies. You know, two years ago, there was this lie going around that I was on drugs. I'm the worst addict in the world. I take Tylenol PM. I can't even talk. Uh, I'm the, I make a terrible addict. I have no tolerance for anything. I'm just telling you, I ain't quitting. Spread lies. I don't care. I ain't quitting. Take everything I got. I ain't quitting. You know why? Because there's something on deep on the inside of me that will not be taken away. There's something that nobody can talk me out of. And I don't care how tired I am. I don't care how sick I am. I don't care how hungry I am. I don't care how in need I am. There's something down deep down on the inside of me that nobody can get in and nobody can steal. Addiction can't steal it. Depression can't steal it. Loneliness can't steal it. I know who I am in Christ and I will not be moved. I am like a tree planted by the water and in the lean times I will give fruit in the lean times I will have a leaf in the lean times everything will be made for me by my father in heaven why because there's something deep on the inside and I stand now and say I will be effective I will be effective in the grace of God in the love of Jesus Christ and in the mercy of my king I will be effective stand to your feet this morning